and uh, we were in a pepper company, and we uh, got a sign that we were going to move up. So they came and got us at night. In the evening, everything is at night, you know. So we uh, went up there. They took us in as far as they could take us. Up they were on uh, third division was on line then. So uh, <laughs> I remember how scared we were. <laughs> we could hear small arms fire. We could hear artillery and, and flashing and things. And, Man, this is going to be something, you know. And uh, we were met down below the mountain that we got to walk up by uh, a rock soldier. We had Korean rock soldiers with us. And they escorted me. I was one of the first ones, I remember, Abel Company, so me and maybe three or four other guys went up to our assignment. And uh, we, the other two guys, got into their Easy Company, the Fox Company, and the same at the same night. And there we were <clears throat> in a combat situation, but it was at that time it was uh, pretty quiet. I mean, it was you hear small arms fire and things, and our, our, there's always artillery, but uh, uh, we got. Uh, we got some, uh, at the member right, we got some uh, time in in the rear there. We had uh, maybe a week or so in back. It was like a division uh, time. Uh, I'm trying to think of the word, I can't say it. Anyway, uh, then we got back up the line and uh, then we got into some action where uh, that was November, yeah. Little Gibraltar there got overrun, and that's for my friend Marlin. <laughs> he, was, he was killed. It bothered me a lot. A long time. It still does. Um, that night, the Chinese overran us. <laughs> And his company was overrun by Chinese. And there was a lot of artillery, and um, he was really killed by uh, a direct hit on his bunker. We, we were in, it's like a hole in the ground, but bunkers with sandbags on top and everything. I didn't uh, find out for sure until later, but uh, he was healed that night. And we had to uh, defend ourselves, you know. But we finally got the Chinese off that mountain that uh, that Marlon was killed. And uh, we got to more or less established the same t uh, line we had before. And we, I wouldn't find until December, then Joe McKay, my other friend there, he was, uh, we had a lot of patrols. And to go through, but out to, on patrol, you had to go through a minefield, and they were marked. and. Uh, He'd be real careful, he didn't, nobody made a mistake. And well, it happened that uh, they were going through and Joe was a master sergeant, he was falling uh, lieutenant. And lieutenant had 
people in front of him, but the lieutenant stepped, uh, stepped off the path a little bit and he stepped out of mine. And uh, lieutenant lost his leg and Joe got hit real bad. So he was, that was in December, middle of December. So the two guys went over with, in less than two months, they were gone, you know. <laughs> and then, from then on, um, I was in a lot of, I was a promoter from uh, Machine Gun Squad to the platoon sergeant, which, in charge of the whole platoon, there's about 40, some men, you know. But in, we had a lot of patrols, so we had to assign men sometimes to go on patrol. And, and I had, uh, we didn't have it every night, but sometimes we had to assign men maybe every other week to go on patrol. And I was uh, assigning, uh, one night I remember they needed a um, motor, Mortar uh, along with them, uh, assault mortar, we called it, uh, to go on patrol, and they're going to establish an uh, outpost out there. So I, I kind of took turns with, uh, try to be fair with the guys and tell them that, uh, well, he went last week, so you go this week, or, you know, and it got to be, his name was Chico. It was his turn, but he was supposed to go rotate home. And I said, well, you don't have to. And I want to. And he got killed. <laughs> and we had to retake that. Uh, outpost, they got run over. And I had to identify a couple of them, one was him. And it's, it's a bad part of war. That's about it except I had uh, some, a few good experiences. It wasn't all bad. Oh yeah, I had uh, fun with, in Japan with uh, my friends. Uh, we go have beer, you know? <laughs> and uh, really strange, we weren't expecting something like that. We went to, a uh, place that had beer and uh, had liquor and there'd be a, a Japanese girl sitting by you, you know, and uh, she, they, friendly of course, but they couldn't, they couldn't communicate. <laughs> but you'd buy them a beer probably and then uh, Three or four of us would take turns by maybe three or four beers. I remember one time there was the girl that sat by you would usually take your money and go up to like a cashier. We called her Bamasan. Right. I gave the girl $20. That's quite a bit of money in those days. And she forgot to come back with my change. <laughs> oh, that was something. I remember that. 